tour possible but that's not gonna be uh, easy we have so many cool things to see and I'm blown away by all the amazing bills here uh, so stick with me even more busy now someone is famous good morning we are here with project D and and I'm very curious of what we are looking at here. Please introduce yourself a little bit, where you're from and what we're looking at. So my name is Dominik, I come from Poland uh, and this is my backyard art project. Uh, project D has uh, so far been just an art project, an art outlet for me. Uh, but apparently what I have made uh, resonates with people. So um, the bike is, uh, I like to call it a, a road plus. It's a road bike for uh, poor quality roads. Uh, perfect for where I live these days. Um, it's made in uh, three different materials. So essentially the bottom part, starting with the fork, head tube, down tube, chain stays and dropouts, that's stainless steel. Uh, we have a Columbus XCR down tube and that's pretty much the only standard part because the fork, head tube, uh, chain stays, dropouts, that's all 3D printed. Cool. So that unlocked a lot of uh, degrees of freedom for me. And I wanted to, the bottom of the frame to be uh, steel for like drrr, high frequency uh, micro suspension thing. And then I have a um, carbon fiber upper part, upper skeleton. So all the skinny tubes, uh, top tubes, uh, uh, seat stays and, and uh, both seat tubes are carbon fiber. Yep. And the idea is that this provides me uh, a little bit of extra comfort in the, uh, in the low frequency. So I can get a little bit of, of twist, a little bit of flex to the back. And essentially splitting one tube into two tubes changes the behavior and, 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 and I can get I can get more uh, suspension going on like this but I don't have that much flex in the head tube so 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 more degrees of freedom in designing and uh, okay. especially for guys like me that bike is super comfortable and I can I, I solve the problem of uncomfortable bikes of today I noticed one thing and I'm a little bit curious would it be possible to adjust the seat height at some point yeah, yeah so I get that question a lot actually I had to invent my way around uh, adjusting a double seat tube that's that's a little bit tricky so uh, there is adjustment we have approximately three centimeters of adjustment I cut it to size and then uh, then we can go up and down around like three centimeters and put some spacers inside awesome are there any like short-term new plans for you to to build something else um, well uh, judging by the reactions and the discussions I have had with people I need to go back home and quick sit down and make a few more okay. uh, do some accelerated testing put some guys on the bikes and then put some miles on it um, and then I don't know uh, maybe start a company maybe uh, get some uh, liability insurance and and yeah. start start putting it out because it is uh, quite a lot of interest okay. in it the sounds bike. very exciting yeah um, very good thank, thank you. you so much <laughs> you. we're here with CJ and I believe she built an amazing bike here. Um, tell me a bit about yourself, where you're from, what are we looking at? Um, so I'm from England and I started building frames about five years ago. Uh, I built just a couple a year. Um, I basically started building frames because uh, I really wanted to build one and I made a very rubbish box section aluminium jig and then I walked into my university workshops and asked to borrow a blowtorch and for some reason they said yes. And uh, yeah, my friends and sort of family just kept bugging me to make them a frame. And that's how it ended up continuing. Um, so I do a couple, couple of frames a year, some for me, some for friends or friends of friends, just by word of mouth. And then I've ended up here because of Tram's Inclusivity Scholarship this year. And uh, yeah, it's been really cool just uh, hang out all weekend and talk about bikes with people. <laughs> So show me a little bit uh, the details and tell me a little bit like what were the, the struggles and what made you decide to do go with the two tubes on the top for example? Yeah, so I mean like the most obvious part of this is it's a double twin tube design. We've got the twin top tubes, we've got twin down tubes as well. Um, these are custom bent by me. Uh, I've never bent tubes before, um, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with how they've turned out. Um, but then yeah, if you look a little bit, little bit closer, 
there's all of these sort of bracing parts here and down at the bottom bracket that I added on as well. Um, and I'm, I'm really pleased with those. I think they look really neat. Yeah, really <laughs> sick. Um, one last question, because I know you won an award. How do you feel about that? I mean, um, it's very cool. Like it's, it's just kind of lovely to be here, and it's nice to have that recognition of um, a frame builder who's someone who's a bit different, not somebody you'd normally see at a bike show. So, yeah, it feels great to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy for you. Congratulations, Thank and you. thanks for having us over in your booth. Um, we're here with Pierre from Bordeaux and um, we're looking at his amazing build that he made for his father. Um, please tell me a bit more about yourself, where you're from and how this all got here. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Pierre from France. Uh, I live in Champagne area. So I'm starting riding bicycle at my four years old uh, due to my father. So uh, now I am here to uh, introduce you to my new work. Um, this one is the new uh, road bike, um, made in titanium with some 3D printing parts. Um, we have the chance to have Schwalber on this project to have the perfect match with the new uh, unlimited white tires, uh, looking amazing on bike. Walk me a bit. Um, walk me a bit through the details because there's there's amazing cockpit. There's the beautiful. Yeah, um, it's a special project. Uh, Freshly made uh, with a um, special uh, integration system with a 3D uh, cockpit uh, with 3D head tube to match uh, the super nice uh, cockpit from Envy. Uh, with all the timeline of our season with uh, four colors, as we can see on the, the bar tape, the small stripe on the, on the front of the bar uh, with the matching colors. Um, we have yeah, working on every part as possible to increase the, the details, the comfort with the carbon seat post integration, um, no cable outside, um, super nice trunk set from a German company, uh, THM, and uh, yeah, nice wheels from Envy, uh, main partner from the start of the, the project. So yeah, it's a good summary of my uh, best partner uh, from the start. Very exciting. Thanks again, uh, congratulations, and thanks for having us here in your booth and walking us through the wonderful bike. Um, have a great last day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So we're here with Jan from True Love, and I'm very excited for him to tell something about this beautiful build. Um, take us away, Jan. Okay, so this is... Uh, it's called Vagabundus. It's our um, gravel bike. It's, uh, it's the bike that clients ask for the most uh, from our lineup. Uh, yeah, so as a gravel bike, it fits up to uh, 50 millimeters tires. Now it's more like uh, in an all road setup. Frame is made of Columbus uh, chroma tubes, like the top, top families. So, uh, spirit and life like the lightest uh, tubes you can get which provides like the most supple and uh, the nicest feeling of the ride um, it's fillet braced uh, with brass and then we fi always finish the fillets fillets so it looks very smooth um, what makes this bike especially unique well you know, <laughs> making a custom bike is like making uh, every time a unique bike. So, so every bike is unique for, for uh, its owner. So for me, the most important thing is that we always go with the owner um, through the process. So he can kind of build a relationship with the object. And yeah, and, and there is some kind of connection uh, created uh, between the rider and the bike and um, yeah this is the most important thing for me yeah uh, I think that's super cool let's have a look at the paint job maybe because yeah. you just pointed out something super nice like how how you place the logo and mm. you keep it on during the paint process yeah um, tell me like walk me through that a little bit yeah so uh, in, every f in every frame that we build, there are some uh, details like uh, the head badge and uh, some logos um, on the frame in a few spots. And these are made of uh, brass 
um, and they are, uh, um, they are brazed with silver to the frame. Then they are covered with paint and after the frame comes from the paint shop, I just uh, um, uncover the, 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 the natural brass from paint and I polish it. I love that. Thank you so much. Uh, I think you, yeah, how you say, you go the extra mile to make sure that every detail is in place. Um, thanks for having us here and um, good luck that last day here and hope, hope your voice will last till four o'clock. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're here with Chris from Sour Bicycles. Um, Chris, this is a new project. What are we looking at? This looks amazing. Um, all new stuff we haven't seen before. Walk us through it. Yeah, so this is the PBJ part of the special projects uh, by Sour. So we call the whole project uh, SRD, Sour Racing Development. And everything we either want to build or our team riders basically force us to build or try out for them. We do under the SRD label and we'll work our way up from there. So eventually things will move into production. Sometimes it's just for fun or one-off builds. So yeah, this time we built a 120 millimeter down country trail bike. Awesome. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself because you're Chris. Where are you based? Um, where do the bikes get built? Yeah, so. I'm Chris, <laughs> again. Um, I run Sauer together with my team. Um, we're based in Dresden and we build all the frames ourselves. So we used to build our frames in Taiwan or have them built and ever since COVID hit, we kind of changed direction to our homebrew project, which basically means we're building the frames ourselves. So we started in early 22 with building all the mountain bike frames in house and then later January this year, we added all the dropper frames as well. So now all sour frames are 100% homebrew, built in Germany. I think it's super cool. I also couldn't help but notice uh, you have a small award here. Congratulations. Do you want to share a little bit, like, why did you get that? Oh yeah, so that's the award we won. We won something. That's the uh, Outstanding Contribution Award for the Bespoke Show this year. And it basically means that Every time the guys from Breesburg had a problem, I was the one who took the call and tried to fix it. <laughs> That's who you are, aren't you? Kind of. <laughs> uh, Chris, thanks so much. I think we almost covered it all. I'm looking at news. We got it. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Um, super happy to be here with you. And um, good luck on the last day of Breesburg. Thank you. <laughs> We're here with Nick from Tilfin Cycling, the owner, and I'm really curious, like, how did he come up with the concept? What makes him tick? So, Nick, take us away. Where are you from? Who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> so, I'm Nick Broadbent. I, uh, I'm from Scotland, from just south of Glasgow. And uh, so, I uh, trained in mechanical engineering and product design. And I developed products for lots of other people for many years. It's like medical okay. devices or consumer packaging, things that didn't really get me out of bed. Okay. I always loved the technology, loved the engineering. I always thought it was strange that you had bag companies making bags and rack companies making racks, but they didn't come together as a sort of system. So this mechanism here I designed was sort of one of the, one of the sort of key things I think. It's an aluminium CNC machined uh, assembly with parts with, uh, you still have sort of plastic spacers, but when you, when you clamp this up, it really takes away any and all rattle uh, and really grips tight. Um, but by also putting structure inside the bag, it means you could have a rack that is more aesthetically pleasing. So yeah, the way that the the bags attached was one part of the problem, but then the other big part was to do with how the system can fit on a bike without, uh, without rack points. So if I just demonstrate uh, quickly. So by 
changing the axle to our axle, it meant that we could have a common point of connection on all bikes. Bikes, are, bikes come in all shapes and sizes, but they all, have, they all have an axle and they all have a seat post. So by developing a method to connect to those three points, you create this sort of triangular, rigid uh, connection system. So I couldn't help but notice one more new thing, and that's this thing on the adventure fork. We want to share something about that? Yeah, so uh, as we gradually produce more products, we're sort of looking at other places to put them. And uh, if you have a, uh, an adventure fork that has uh, triple bosses or three eyelets, then we have a, uh, a very clever, what we think is clever, <laughs> Uh, connection system to be able to put uh, many panniers on your fork so that'll be released in uh, the end of November so keep your eyes peeled. Absolutely awesome I think it's great. Yeah. Thanks so much again uh, absolutely wonderful to hear your story um, we have to move on but let's go. Thank you very much. Okay we're here with Dres uh, from BCB. Yes. Tell me all about what are we looking at where are you from Who, who's Dres? Um, I'm Dries, I'm from Belgium, from Leuven, uh, and this is the bike we brought. Uh, we got really lucky with the Ceram scholarship, because I always do these kind of frames, but I usually never do with these kind of parts. So it's nice to do that for a change. But actually, still the, the, the frame is still an old lady's bike that I recycled. So, Dries, you just referred a little bit to your concept because you take old bikes apart and you build new ones from them and basically you create an artwork from scraps of bikes and walk me through what we're looking at. Um, so yeah, I just get my hands on old parts they throw away or, or whatever or people give them to me and yeah, if, if I use those parts instead of buying new tubes or new dropouts and, and having to pay a lot of money for only the source, uh, the material. I just take free material and I also on labor or on, on, it's more easy to rebuild an old frame than to start from zero. And that way I can get it in a bit different, but still using regular parts, the old school parts that I know I, you can rely on these 80s, 90s kind of strong bikes. There's one more thing, because I believe that you have a pretty special place in your community where you create special bikes that are basically accessible for a diverse public. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, of course. So I'm from Leuven, very proud, uh, from Belgium, the, my, my city. And um, yeah, I just like to build bikes for the people. And the people I know don't have big, big money. So that way I'm happy I can, I can do it that way, accessible. And also got a lot of young kids coming in, like little ride outs with them, like do some wheelie stuff. Because I don't only build frames, I do a lot of um, yeah, pimping bikes or how you call it, just customizing and mixing parts. So getting a whole lot of scrap, sorting it out, cutting it up and then making new stuff out of that. Yeah, I'm really happy and I feel blessed that I can be here and, and pull up with this crazy stuff. Because normally it doesn't look fancy like this, but now I got all the, the top gear and yeah. Because it's not only about the frame. The frame for me is the soul of the bike. So that's really, I mean, the wheels are big things. The tires are great difference. And to just have have this different league, just give it a go. And also making it accessible because I'm not going to sell this bike. It's just going to be in a shop. Uh, you want to ride it, you come ride it. You want to go somewhere, hey, grab this bike. It's going to go fast, you know? Yeah. And that way my home music can ride it. I can ride it. It's just, yeah. Yep. Very cool. Very happy that I met you. Uh, me Thank too. you. <laughs> We're here with Grant on the Schwalbe boot, the final one of today, and I'm going to ask Grant what we're actually looking at and tell him, take us away on the Schwalbe boot. Hi Quinda, thanks for having us. So Schwalbe has been supporting the Bespoke Show for about 10 years now. And this is the first opportunity for us to support European show. So we've been able to bring a number of bikes that are employee owned and in fact also employee made with the leaf cycles here made by Michael from our office which is pretty cool pretty unique bike quite utilitarian the digger bike or, sh or shovel bike as it's known 
it's a nice opportunity for us to be here as a brand. We're obviously not a frame builder, so it's a privilege to be amongst all this talent here. But as a brand, we're able to support these smaller businesses, smaller bike shops that are here, and try to try and just promote it. You know, this sort of craftsmanship is getting more popular again, which is nice. And uh, it's nice to be part of what we've got going on here. So we've got some domestic made bikes from Germany with a Pascuoli. So this one obviously being carbon, not everything bespoke has to be steel or metal. So you do get you know, something a bit different with carbon bikes. Which is owned by Patrick, our events manager. But then going back to the kind of romance of frame building with steel, we've got Nils's gravel bike here as well. Beautiful. Just a nice opportunity to have a proper bike on the stand rather than just having tires on display. We've got the privilege of having this artwork on the stand that we can put our great tires on. We've even been able to bring some bikes from the UK. So we've got a Curtis bike here. Curtis bikes have been around for 50 years. So in the UK, yeah, the Slapjack, so kind of agro gravel. The Curtis bikes have been around for 50 years. So it's a nice. British Heritage brand, super details, Philip Braze. So we missed one thing. <laughs> we also wanted to show our support to the frame builders and we had a supported evening where we sponsored a bit of food and some drinks in the evening for all the builders so we could all interact and talk and catch up and it was kind of well received. So that was a nice little nod from us to all the frame builders, a little treat for everyone. Thanks for that, it was a really great evening. <laughs> I remember that one. Good. Uh, thanks so much and um, yeah, good luck with the last few hours of uh, Bespoke. Feet are hurting but we'll make it through.